Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's broadcast of the XLNC Mid-League. We have got one excellent match for you guys tonight between Darkseid and Omega Gaming Unleashed. My name is Gordo, and I am joined by Rude as we are getting right into these picks and bands. Yeah, we are indeed, Gordo, after a, a very long best of two that has just concluded over on the XLNC channel. Uh, Omega Gaming Unleashed here looking to continue uh, their recent successes, at least, taking game number two of that best of two series into this best of two up against Dark Side right now. And you can see with those bands already off the table, some fairly focused target bands. We know that we've seen a lot of Seraphine from Unleashed as of last week. Kaiser getting taken away, just a really potent ADC, and uh, Sam Alcum just played on not 20 minutes ago. Yeah, and Darkseid's going to go for an immediate pick on that Pantheon, but it might not be going where you expect. We saw some top lane Pantheon coming out of coach last week on the side of Darkseid, so could really see that in a lot of places. That Pantheon has become so flexible here in Season 11. Seen it support, seen it jungle, seen it mid lane, and might even see a top lane here. Yeah, beautiful uh, amount of flex potential from that B1 Pantheon coming on through, and I'd be excited to see it in the top lane matchup just to see what it can really go with and how well it plays out. Uh, Omega going to answer this time round with just a standard bot lane pick up here, uh, recognizing that the Pantheon could really go anywhere, so they don't want to try and match a counter to the Pantheon for fear of a nice counter pick coming through from dark side. Jin Alistair, something that uh, Unleashed rocked again not uh, not 20 minutes ago. Uh, in their second game, a bit of a rerun coming through for their bot lane this time round. Yeah, and not a terrible matchup against the Pantheon if it is something they end up seeing. And oh boy, it might oh. be as the Swain is going to be locked in here. If it does end up being that Swain Pantheon bot lane, that certainly is something that can be pretty powerful. Swain can get his passive yank for free off of Pantheon's target based CC, can chain that up into a grab and can just keep people CC down for a long time and make sure he can land all of his moves. Could also be, no, maybe not actually, as the Bard's going to be locked in, and that's going to be more likely support than anything, as we might see a spicy Swain Bard bot lane. Yeah, that's going to be something to keep our eyes on down there already. Obviously, Alistair and Jin going to be looking to, uh, uh, well, survive whatever bot lane Darkseid decide to throw at them here, and it looks as though the Swain Bard bot lane is something that I would at least be expecting. Swain in a solo lane has really fallen off as of late and down in the bot lane has a uh, quite an easy time up against the majority of ADCs does have a large uh, or really uh, finds it easy to cope with their trading patterns and so long as you're not opting toward all ins pre level 6 on the swain uh, your trade patterns are fairly straightforward and you can very rarely get hit back for them if you're playing at the max end of your range so look to see how dark side play out this bot lane and look to omega to really try and do their best to keep themselves alive right here but the bot lane that dark side have drafted just pretty much outranges omega to begin with like Jin wants to fire off his auto attacks, but if Swain's playing it correctly, just shouldn't let that happen at all. Yeah, absolutely not. Definitely some early aggression coming out of the dark side draft here with these first three picks. Still have yet to decide what... Maybe their solo laners potentially could be flexing that Pantheon into a solo lane as we discussed already. But Fallen Artemis going to be picking up his signature Kindred there, making sure that that doesn't get banned away in the second phase of bans. And we're going to see Omega holding out for their solo lanes as well. And they're going to have to blind one here. They definitely are. And uh, we will have to wait and see which one around uh, they end up going for. Uh, this time around with a couple of bands coming through focusing primarily on that top lane from Omega and then Darkseid focusing out the, the solo lanes and they're probably one of their two strongest champions respectively. GP away from Simulcrum and the Yone away from Princeton. Going to be uh, very targeted bands coming through and the Shen picked up here in that top lane so going to be a fairly safe stable lane especially with the GP band out. I expect to see that Shen have a nice little time trying to farm up on that top side. Yeah, I like this Shen pick a lot. It's something that's going to be safe up in lane Ooh. against whether it be Silas or Pantheon uh, up in that top lane. And it's also something that once it hits six, we'll be able to maybe provide a little bit of global protection to his teammates as they're going to be dealing with some of the harsh dive potential coming out of what I assume is going to be Jungle Hecker and what I assume is going to be Grand Starfall coming in from Pantheon. Lots of different opportunities for some early tower dives and some serious aggression from the side of Dark Side. Going to hope to temper that with that Shen pickup. And then it's going to be Victor to round out the draft for Princeton here. 
Yeah, that's a really interesting set of uh, set of solo lanes here for Darkseid. I really like the Silas pick up here, uh, be it that it goes into the Shen or to the Victor. A lot of good ulties to take away, notably Silas into Alistair. Uh, very nice to steal away that Unbreakable Will on the Silas. You still have all of your damage. Instead, you just take 50, 50 to 60, 70, however it may be. Uh, percent reduced damage dependent on rank so it's going to be quite interesting to see how this silas fares up and if we do see it go into the top lane i'd like to see it end up in or obviously like to see it end up in the top lane here uh, just so that we get to steal away that stand united even easier so we're going to have to wait and see whereabouts dark side end up putting their champions as we do move our way into the in client draft here yeah, really curious about this Silas and Pantheon. Both are picks that we've seen Darkseid's top laner coach take up in that top lane. So really could be seeing either set here. The the Silas is quite effective up against the Shen, can steal away that stand United and follow him around the map if he feels so inclined. Uh, but also going to be maybe a little bit of a less dominant early on lane, whereas the Pantheon can be super dominant against something like Shen. Uh, in ways that the Silas maybe is going to be a little bit behind early on. Yeah, and I think that the, regardless, basically, of where Darkseid send these solo lanes, they are going to be looking toward this early game as their sort of power spike here. I mean, Hecarim, Pantheon as well. Uh, to an extent, Swain, typically a more mid-game oriented champion, but all focusing around that early game and heading toward a snowball style where you can see on Omega, Jin, Kindred, Shen and Victor all have insane scaling into the late game, looking for a really decent team fight, maybe a 1 4 setup with the Shen in a side lane. So, looking to Darkseid to use this bard to roam around the map early on, make sure that they can find advantages with Hecarim, with the Pantheon. You know, we talked about all of their mobility that they've got on the squad as well. That if they're able to find some advantages, Darkseid should really be looking to continue their success and continue into game one with a good, good sort of uh, breeze about their momentum. Yeah, Darkseid is the highest rated team coming on into this week with a perfect record and with a 100% first blood rate as well. And you Ooh. can certainly see why with drafts like this, where there's just so much potential for aggression in the early game coming on. Really going to be up to the side of Omega to try to just play tightly, play cleanly, and make sure that they do not fall victim to any of these early aggressive picks and any of these early ganks. Yeah, and the meta at the minute as well, I definitely would say favoring Dark Side's draft right now. The the snowball oriented meta is uh, sort of what we're seeing right now. Granted, Omega appear to have shown that they're pretty good at stalling games out over the last couple of games that they've played. But either way, uh, the the snowball capabilities that Darkseid have in combination with how much and how far a 3-4k gold lead can take you in the early game. I definitely like the Darkseid draft, uh, and I really want to see how well they can execute on it. Yeah, and that is going to be all the picks locked in. Does look like it's going to be the Silas up in the top lane, looking to steal away that Stand United with Hijack to follow Smalcrum around the map on the Shen and try to make sure that he can prevent any... Good Shen Cheese plays there. Any submarine plays from bringing in an unexpected ninja into these team fights. <laughs> and that is going to enable crits on this Pantheon. Also coming in from the mid lane, going to be able to access the side lanes so incredibly easily with his Grand Skyfall. Yeah, you know, you can already see the, the play forming in your head, right? Sh Silas steals away, steals away the Stand United Pantheon ulti's bot lane, and Silas just dips back into Fog of War a little bit, and all of a sudden there's a Pantheon with a Silas just TPing into the middle of your lane right now. And Alistair Jin, uh, as a duo, don't really have that much mobility. Yes, Alistair's got a little bit of peel in his kit, but it's not going to be too easy for him. Or adjustment here on the Jin to keep themselves safe if they're extended just a little bit too far in the laning phase. Hecarim as well, a great champion at diving, and uh, the bot lane plays definitely could be rife here for the uh, dark side squad. Yeah, and every time you see Silas, you want to take a look at some of the ultimates on the other side. And we've been talking about the Stand United quite a bit, but also going to be looking at that Kindred ultimate, going to be looking at the Unbreakable Will from Alistair, going to be looking at what other kind of moves he has access to. And this is an interesting array. Got a couple of good survivability tools, but none of the big AoE kind of CC abilities that you often expect to see a Silas stealing away. Can get Chaos Storm from the Victor for that AoE damage, but not really going to have a huge amount of strictly engaged focus 
repurposed tools unless you want to use uh, the Jin Ultimate. Yeah, it's it's one of these things where we're going to be waiting to see how Coach picks his ultis at different points incredibly uh, wisely because uh, just having the, the team fight durability that the Alistair ulti provides you is something that he might want when they go diving, but equally, that Lamps Respite will give you exactly the same benefits, but you might have to uh, be careful with your usage. If you use that too early, you might just save the targets that you're trying to kill, and as you say, they have got the Jin ulti for a little bit of setup, a little bit of engage, but if you're going for that sort of play... Uh, you're not in the back line. You're not the one who's already diving deep inside. Really probably going to be looking to use that ulti to sort of finish off kills more so than start off the fight. Yeah, going to be really up to Zongi on this Hecarim to be going for those engages. He's going to have to use that unstoppable onslaught to get into the back line and to probably, be, uh, to probably pick off a target if he can get onto it just to try to get anything going there because the Pantheon ultimate's very slow. You need to have a very good idea of where you're funneling the enemy team into to get going. Also, very hard to land a Tempered Fate from Bard. So as far as engage options go, it's going to be really in Zonky's hands. Yeah, of course. The, the Tempered Fate does have sort of that, that nice little crisp range at about uh, a screen and a half away on the Bard where it's pretty difficult to dodge. But like you say, other than that, it is incredibly difficult. And uh, I, I definitely expecting the, the mantle of engages to come from Zongi to begin with. All right, well, with that established, we're going to get loaded up into game here, make sure everything is synced up for the stream. And for that to happen, we are going to have to take a quick break, but we will be right back with game one of Dark Side versus Omega. Do not go anywhere. Back, everybody. We have loaded up into game here for game one of Dark Side versus Omega in the XLNC Mid League. We are going to have two games for you guys tonight. And with this draft all completed, we are going to be getting right into the first one. My name is Gordo, and I am joined once again by Rude Dude. Rude Dude, what are you expecting this game? Um, You know what? I'm expecting early aggression, uh, and I'm going to be disappointed if I don't get it. Uh, I'm looking to Dark Side to really take this early game into Omega Gaming Unleashed and try and punish them before they've even had a chance to get those items that they're going to so long for this game. And uh, with, with champions like the Hecarim, like the Pantheon, they have really easy setup, and I think that Princeton in the mid lane is going to have to be on his feet, on his toes, in terms of trying to make sure that he's safe, making sure that there's a lot of vision around his around his lane a lot of vision to make sure that he doesn't get ganked and it's going to require assistance sub and fallen artemis are going to have to try and help him out in this mid lane otherwise we could just see a pantheon snowball incredibly quickly yeah, and it is going to be on dark side to get that snowball going just because they are running one of these 80 carryless team comps, which just means generally that you're going to get outscaled. And this comp is certainly no exception. If Adjustment is able to just take it into the late game with this Jin, he is going to be pretty much unmatched in his damage potential by anybody on the side of dark side. Yeah, and I really like the pickup here for Adjustment with his starting item, taking the boots and the four potions, making sure that he's less susceptible to getting hit by these skill shots, which are the only real way that he does take damage in the laning phase if he gets hit by those bard cues by the roots from the swain as well uh, pretty much the only way that he finds a, uh, finds himself at a deficit there so picking up those early boots making sure that he's uh, a little bit safer in the lane gonna help out quite a bit all right, I'm going to see that early level three clear being taken by Fallen Artemis here, going right from his red buff over into his blue side jungle. Wants to make sure he's going to be on the bottom side here as Hecarim is going to be finishing up bottom side clear as well. Yeah, right now, level twos could come through here for Unleashed. Ooh, on both sides. Picking, just in both side lanes from the side of Omega. Coach going to be forced back maybe a little bit there as he gets taunted onto. And the sub going to be blowing the flash early on to force a flash out of Rice every meal on the Bard. That's a good trade for the Alistair. He has access to the Hex Flash while Bard does not. So he's going to still have access to some sort of flash resource and is willing to trade it all day, every day. Here he goes for it again. Oh, we have to wait and see. Unfortunate little whiff right there. The... Uh... Tether on the Cosmic Binding connects regardless of flashing, dashing, whatever you want to do. Wherever the first portion hits you, it will connect onto the wall if you give it the opportunity to. And now Princeton in the mid lane is going to take a bit of a rough end of a trade here. Crit's going to go on in, but nice little response actually from Princeton. Holding the damage, making sure that he's nice and fine. And Smalcrum up on this top side being an absolute cheese lord. Taunting the coach up right there so that he couldn't last hit the siege minion. Yeah, it's going to hurt on the side of Coach, but you got to watch out for this Pantheon in the mid lane. This new 2011 Pantheon, he's got such a short cooldown when he starts tapping those Qs away that you got to watch out. He's going to keep stabbing you over and over and over again, and you got to watch out for that. He's going to end up solo killing you pretty early on. You can see, for instance, taking the cleanse to start avoiding some of that cheese. 
uh, but he's going to have to keep it in his mind the whole game. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I, he took Resolve as well. I'm not quite 100% uh, on that one, but pretty sure we did see him taking into that. Uh, I saw some bone plating early on, and yeah, you can see it on the, the little stat panel on the right that he ended up going for bone plating. So we see more trades coming through on the top side. Doubt anything to amount from here. Grasp of the Undying on some Alcrum means that the overall extended trades will probably end up in his favour, but Coach overall having more sustain with that Corrupting Potion means that overall for the time being, Smalkin going to be a little bit behind in that HP differential. Worth noting as well that uh, the in the game of Flip Your Scuttle Crab for Kindred, he did lose. Uh, the bottle lane crab was not the one with the mark, and unfortunately, uh, Zongi spared no expense when going to clear away that top side crab, which did have that beautiful Kindred mark number one. Yeah, going to come up tails on that first one there. So we're going to want to keep an eye on where those Kindred Marks end up going and if oh. Fallen Artemis is able to capitalize. But Coach finding himself chunked out quite a bit there Conqueror. by Smalkrum. Go in for the first blood, though. He's going to land all of his abilities. Shen just has nothing left in the tank, and he's going to end up taken down by Coach. Yeah, he uses the flash to just about get away from any turrets coming through, but incredibly clean Silas play up on the top side using that Kingslayer. Baits in Smalkrum just a little bit, uh, and it does exactly what it needed to do when we talked about the Silas and the rest of the dark side squad here needing to find a snowball solo kill up on the top lane, exactly what they need to start off with. Yeah, it is certainly going to put that Silas at quite the advantage there. He did expand the flash while some Alcrum still has access to it, so could possibly see some shenanigans there, but it is going to be a huge influx of gold coming into that Silas. He's going to take that recall, come back with all the components of a lost chapter, not quite able to finish it all the way, but he's going to be feeling real good in this lane. Yeah, and also they're just taking the Drake down on the bot side as well. Uh, we were hoping again for this early game to go their way. They're doing everything they need to do to begin with here, getting this dragon off the bat, Zongi. Going to be picking up the Cloud Drake here on the Heckman with a little bit of help from every meal here. He's going to be able to give him a little portal as well, a little bit of a caretaker shrine to make his way out to safety as well. And without further ado, he's going to mosey his way back onto the bot lane here. We can see that Swain's taking a little bit of a deficit in the CS, but overall, uh, netting themselves quite a few advantages. And Smokram isn't dissuaded at all. He's still going in for these aggressive trades. He's got the grasp of the Undying procs to try to keep himself healthy. Does get a favorable one there, even though the last one didn't go his way. But he's going to have to watch out here now that Silas has out-itemed him. Yeah, it was really that, that double proc of the Q right there, giving Silas all of his Conqueror stacks. And you can see right there, he's actually chewing through some Alchem a little bit right here. If he gets hit by the first portion of the chains, it doesn't matter too much. But it's when that second sweet spot really pops up that the majority of the damage comes on in and really hurt, help, or hurts the Chen. Yeah, he is maxing that Chain Lash, so he's not going for the heavy healing Kingslayer sort of style of Silas. He's going for this poke damage, so if he's able to get both ticks onto Shen like that, that is going to hurt a lot. <laughs> That's exactly what the, 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 plan right, it, the plan is right here, and you see Rice is roaming into the mid lane as well. Princeton throws the three missing pings down on that to sort of signify that bot lane, you know, you've got yourself a bit of a window, maybe make something happen, but... With Coach stealing away that Stand United, you can see that that, that is pretty much going to dissuade Omega from making any plays happen across the rest of the map, and honestly, quite rightly so. Yeah, that is on a timer, though, so he's got to use it or lose it within the next about minute or so, and once that's gone, it's going to be quite a bit before he's able to steal away the Stand United, so that's going to give a window for Omega to actually be able to use the Shen Ultimate the way they want without the risk of Coach stealing it uh, mid-Ultimate and following him. Yeah, and I like that you're bringing up this window as well, more so for Darkseid here, because that gives them sort of a, a short amount of time for them to make a play. Notice Pantheon, Hecarim, both level 6 right now. Uh, there's a lot of potential to see some plays that happen, be it down bot, be it in the mid lane. Wherever they may go, they have all of their tools now available since they've broached that level 6 marker. And even though there's no real gold lead right here, you can tell that Darkseid are going to try and use these advantages, use that Silas ulti to really make it happen. Yeah, this is all face up though, and Omega knows that it's coming. So you can see Princeton taking a recall there. The bot lane setting up a little bit of a freeze here. They're gonna have the sub tank up this wave to make sure that they keep that wave on their side of the map. They know that Kritz is level six. They know that Zongi's level six, and they do not want to be the ones who fall victim to those ultimates. Yeah, and even better, Fallen Artemis shadowing down on the bot side as well, taking Gromp. Likely going to head toward that blue buff as well, because on the Unleashed side, it doesn't matter if they're setting up a freeze right here. As long as Scratch and Meal can break that said freeze, they can easily die for this bot lane, just as the two members. So it's going to be important to make sure that on that bot side, Kindred is there. Kindred is ready, and of course, Shen, rather, going to have that Stand United. 
Opportunity is gone, by the way. Coach no longer has that stand united. It's it's gone on cooldown, and now the hijack's gonna be back up in maybe about 40 seconds or so, but not gonna be able to steal away from Shen again for quite a while. So missed opportunity there. He's gonna have to find a way to get close to Fallen Artemis or to wander into another lane to even be able to use that hijack again for a while. All in Ooh, and that's gonna be all in from Princeton there. Just gets the stun down, throws down the Chaos Storm, and forces a flash out of crits. Well played by Princeton there in that lane. Yeah, and as much as we've talked about how well this early game is going, uh, at the minute, we're nine minutes in, gold is even. Uh, there's no real leads starting to amount for themselves that haven't been matched elsewhere. So we can see on the top side that Coach is doing quite well up against Malcolm, has had that solo kill. Uh, in the mid lane, Princeton holding his own. Uh, jungle as well as Ongi, a couple of camps ahead of Fallen Artemis. But then down on the bot side, we're really seeing this sort of huge CS lead starting to amount from Mega Gaming Unleashed. Down or up 30 CS for the Jin means that Adjustment is in such a good position to neutralize pretty much everything that Coach has generated on the top side uh, and actually giving Omega overall a bit of a lead. Yeah, feels really good if you're Omega there. You got a good advantage in the bot lane. Haven't given any kind of snowball potential over to, the I'd say, the real dangerous snowballers, the Hecarim and the Pantheon there. You're going to end up losing the first couple of dragons with this kind of team comp. That's just something you expect to be seeding away. But all in all, they're in the position they want to be in. Exactly. And with Princeton in the mid lane, already picked up the tier of the Goddess. So p building in to that Seraph, so Embrace quite nicely, already getting those stacks going, and you can see in the mid lane that the CS lead slowly starting to grow, starting to amount a little bit more so every single wave, and the trade's really going in his favor as well. Crit's finding it incredibly difficult to dodge out on those lasers, and it's really pretty difficult to use Aegis on a shield, but here we go with the gank in the mid lane. Yeah, it's going to be the ult coming in from Hecarim, trying to get right onto Princeton, but he's going to cleanse away from the stun just in time, flash away, and he survives the first gank of the game from Zongi. That is going to be the uh, ghost blown from the Hecarim. That's going to be the onslaught. That's going to be everything off of him, everything off of Princeton as well here, Sweet except for the ultimate. Bro. But all in all, that's a survive. Oh, but that is going to be the tempered fate coming through. And here's the repeat gank. He's got nowhere to go now. The stand United comes through, but it gets melted through right away. And that's going to be the second kill of the game going over. But now it's a flash in from the sub, getting right onto crits, getting the ignite down and ensuring that he gets that kill and now here comes the ultimate from Jin going to be going right onto Zongi and going to be guaranteeing Fallen Artemis that kill as well. Rice every meal forced to portal away and get on out of there but Omega able to tie up the game two to two. Yeah really nice stuff actually coming through from Unleashed right there. Princeton overstepping his bounce a little bit with the Bard ulti uh, does fall but it's a good response from the rest of Unleashed. Sub using his flash to make his way into that fight knocks up two members and it looks like the Drake's going to get picked up as well for Unleashed down there. So he talked about those early game Drakes that Darkseid were expected to pick up. Uh, that second one, unfortunately, not going to be quite so easy as down around that dragon, it is going to be Kindred that picks that one up. And quite easily as well, they should be able to make their way to safety. Yeah, really great to disrupt the dragon stacking on the snowball comp there from the side of Omega. That's going to feel real good for them. An excellent play from adjustment in the sub on that roam into the mid lane. There was already rice every meal there trying to make the play happen, but old scratch was nowhere to be found. So adjustment able to open up with the curtain call and make a big play happen. Yeah, and Princeton might actually try and turn this back around here in the mid lane. Does uh, does a fair amount of damage with this Lyandre's Anguish components at least being picked up relative to uh, the two fairly decent items of Pantheon and his Gore Drinker that they're going for. So at the minute, fairly neutral items in the mid lane, but just doesn't look like the Pantheon has that burst damage, that early game potency that we're really hoping for. Uh, and Princeton with that CS lead with the level lead as well, looking pretty strong in this mid lane actually, and the Pantheon really hasn't had any impact. Grand, Sk yeah, Grand Skyfall just hasn't done anything yet. Yeah, can just keep firing that death ray right on through those minions, keep just shoving the wave into Pantheon's face, and there's not too much he can do about it if he can't find those gank angles. Princeton going to see, he's just going to keep walking up and clearing away these waves. Yeah, and uh, we, we've talked about it, and it's going to keep being brought up here that Unleashed are happy with the scaling coming through on their side right here. The longer this game just goes in a neutral way, they're going to be more than happy to just keep farming up. Smile come up on that top side, going to keep going, farming up his minions as best he can, and if Silas mounts a bit of a CS lead over him, uh, that's not the end of the world because the exact same thing's happening elsewhere but for his laners. So, uh, for the minute, sitting back, waiting, keeping content, Omega Gaming Unleashed are looking in a decent position here with a little bit of a gold lead as well. 
I want to keep an eye on Rice every meal here as he is just unlocked and roaming around the map trying to find Ooh. opportunities. He goes for the Tempered Fate on a Princeton once again, but ends up missing it. But here comes the Onslaught from Hecarim. It might not matter as Fallen Artemis comes on in with the Tempered Fate, going to keep him on alive, or Tempered Fate's part ultimate rather. But you know what I mean yeah. as the Kindred <laughs> going to be keeping up Princeton and ensuring that that gank isn't successful. It's a really big play there by the jungler from Omega Gaming. And once again, another gank from this Hecarim commits the Onslaught of Shadows and doesn't succeed. No, he does not, and uh, a lot of ult is used there to try and make that play happen. Wisely from Fallen uses the uh, Gale Force as well, just to break his way in just in time to keep Princeton alive. And you can see that with all of those expended ultimates and no reward, they're going to put the Herald down in the mid lane, do secure themselves a couple of plays. So uh, they do pick up themselves about 320 gold split between two or three people there. But overall, still down on this bot side, you can see that Adjustment has had control over the wave for pretty much the entire lane, uh, it seems like, with this 30 CS lead still just going strong right now. Uh, similarly, in the mid lane, it didn't obviously hurt that much. Princeton's still even in the lane, so even after everything, feeling confident to stay in the lane and push in another wave, make sure that Pantheon is denied some minions under the turret. Uh, everything's still going as according to plan. Uh, Shen even picked up his first item of the game as well. Yeah, and it's going to be the Frostfire Gauntlet. Really notice that Simulcrum is a huge fan of this Frostfire Gauntlet on these champions. We've seen it on the Malphite, where it's pretty much meta. But on the Shen, you would expect to see the Sunfire more often. Although the Frostfire has some interesting applications. Can get the slows down onto Silas. And that increased size, I love bringing this up, does increase the size of your Shen time. Yeah, so a lot of uh, niche interactions coming through. And we might see an interaction down in the bot lane here. Oh, and that's going to be a landed pulverize that sets him up for headbutt, that sets up Fallen Artemis for the gank here, and even through the Demonic Ascension, likely going to be picking up the uh, the Swain here, and Swain does end up going down. Coach has teleported down, but he's too little, too late, can't make anything happen. That's going to be a successful play for Omega Gaming in the bot lane. Yeah, sub with a really nice Hex Flash right there, pretty much coming up exactly how he needed to. Managed to land the pulverize and then go back, hit the headbutt as well, put Scratch into an awful position, and really greeting the flash there from Swain, not wanting to use it at all until it was far too late. Uh, despite all of that, really good stuff for Unleashed. They do manage to even get the teleport out of Coach, and it's responded with Stand United to both of the top lanes going down bot lane, greeting their bot laners, and then going, well, well I guess we go back top lane now. Yeah, that's TP advantage for Simulcrum, oh. though, as he still has access to the level. Now another Onslaught of Shadows coming in the mid lane, another Flash blown from Princeton, and that's going to keep him alive yet again, as Zongi just cannot make these plays happen. You gotta go somewhere else, Zongi. It's not gonna work here. <laughs> Or you've got to use your ulti uh, uh, when Princeton doesn't have his summoners. Uh, they have burned these summoners two or three times now. Well, actually, just the two, but uh, haven't been back to return the or haven't returned to the scene of the crime just too often. And when they have, Princeton did obviously fall. Uh, but actually, you know, Omega Gaming Unleashed were there, they were ready, they responded. And they had another attempt as well in the mid lane where Princeton's fancy feet were able to keep him alive. But now in this jungle... So possibly walking into a trap here, but the Pulverize Headbutt combo not quite landing from the side of Rice every meal, but none the, or from the side of the sub, rather. And Crit's going to have to blow the flash nonetheless, though. He's gotten jumped on and he's been forced away, and that's going to open up Omega to get onto this dragon. Yeah, and uh, we can see everybody down here right now with Smalcom's TP. Coach getting booped into the team as well. Oh, this knocks Coach right on into the gravity field, and that's going to likely end up with him being picked up here. He's used the unstoppable force oh, that he's stolen away, but that's not enough as Fallen Artemis flashes forward and gets the execute down onto him. Now it's Kritz, who is trying to tank up these shots, but the shield doesn't last forever either. And now Rice Every Meal going to get taunted up yet again. Yet again, another excellent gravity field placement from Princeton ensures that these targets are going to be locked down for longer than they expected. The sub and Princeton working together together here to keep these targets CC. Subs Alistair is incredibly impressive this game, honestly, finding so many flash and hex flash engages that are just netting kills time and time again here for Omega Gaming Unleashed. They're going to turn that dragon into some mid lane tier one pressure as well. Doesn't look like they'll be able to pick it up on this wave. They might be looking for a little bit more here. Sub does need to be careful. He's only level nine uh, after all and can't tank those turrets for too long at all. He does still have the unbreakable will though. He could look for a cheeky little tower dive here if he gets the opportunity as actually the scratch going to end up cc here but here comes crits he's dropping on top of everybody but he finds himself in a 1v3 he's going to be ignited up right away make that a 1v4 so malcolm comes in with the ultimate and that's going to be an easy kill onto crits just biting off more than he can chew there fallen artemis now finding himself in an unfortunate 1v1 with zongi but he's got the team for backup they're all coming up here to try to keep him alive now that the ultimate is gone and it looks like they're going to be able to do so 
Yeah, and the Herald picked up four Fallen Artemis as well here, despite the level disadvantage, was able to secure the smite there over Zongi, and they do pick up the Herald as well. So they are going to be able to use that net themselves, hopefully a turret somewhere across the map. Maybe even use it to break down some bot lane or top lane towers, because they were able to find mid lane tier 1 in the end of it with the... Uh, Extra little injection of gold that crits so nicely donated over to them. Uh, Omega Gaming Unleashed now sitting with a 2,000 gold lead and a th one Drake lead with two of their own. Yeah, they are certainly in the driver's seat now, sitting with a 2k gold lead, as you said. And now, as the next dragon going to be spawning up, not for about three minutes here, and two already in the pocket of Omega Gaming, it feels like they can just kind of sit back, feel feel at ease here, just make sure they don't overextend, don't put themselves in a position where the other side can get back in the game, and they'll be pretty much guaranteed to lock this one up how they want to. It does indeed feel that way. I'm hoping, of course, that the... We do see a little bit more life from Dark Side, and they don't, they don't just bleed out into the darkness uh, in this first game of the best of two. But uh, looking at the way it's going, uh, Omega Gaming Unleashed have just been on the same page here today in this first game of this best of two. They're really just looking like they're a complete unit. Wherever they go, they're going together. And be it that Princeton's getting targeted in the mid lane, the rest of the squad is there to support him. Smilecrum stands united into the mid lane twice now, used his TP to protect Princeton another time. Just so much uh, Chen value, at least, coming out. And you can see that it probably doesn't matter here that there are slight level leads accruing for the jungle and the top lane because the rest of the map is just so far ahead as well. We've got two levels for Princeton, uh, a level for Sub as well. So overall, pretty much leveling out. Yeah, and Darkseid just has to make something happen here, but it's so difficult when you have access to the Stand United and the Lambs are Spite on the side of Omega Gaming. Every time they think that they can get a good engage, they end up having to take so much longer than they expect to. And now Crit's finding himself engaged on in the back line, gonna end up throwing out that shield, keep himself alive just a little bit longer, and he's gonna be able to just back on away with the pressure being placed on by Omega. Yeah, so now coming the top lane might be in danger here, but look who oh. is. Emil just finds himself portaling into the wrong side of dodge as he just gets jumped on by the sub and Princeton is just going to wait for the tempered fate to end, pick him up easily here and the sub busts out the cowbell dancing on the corpse a little bit there as he's just going to be moving on through the mid lane. I <laughs> can continue his way with Princeton to, uh, well, continue their dominance over this mid game right now. We've got a minute on the next Infernal Dragon and you can see a couple of resets looking to come through already, both Samalcom and the sub Princeton all channeling their recalls and even before their recalls have been channeled you can see that the bot lane vision is just so massive already in their favor so we're gonna have to wait and see how uh, how dark side go about trying to clear it out looks like they're gonna have the initial priority to move into at least their own jungle and get rid of it but with those resets coming through with those renewed control wards in the inventory we are expecting to see Omega Gaming at least try and defend their vision or at least replace it once it's gone and Coach has stolen away Stand United, and he is just spam pinging it. They really want to make something happen here now that they have access to that Shen ultimate on their Silas once again. But they need to find an opening. They need to find a place where Zongi can go for this aggressive onslaught of shadows and be followed up with by his top oh, laner. So... And it looks like Omega just doesn't want to give it to him. No, they don't. And I, I love that we've got the sub here roaming around looking for flank angles on Alistair. Uh, and they might be actually looking for a bit of engage of their own here down on the bot side. Yeah, gonna be jumping right on in there. Here comes the onslaught from the Hecarim, but he's just gonna end up pushing adjustment closer to his turret and getting turned on by the entirety of Omega. They're just gonna melt right on through him, and now Coach finds himself alone. He's gonna get taken down as well, and just like that, the side of Omega, all still at full HP, gonna be charging on through along with their Rift Herald. That's gonna get nicely immune by the side of Thrice every meal, but nonetheless, that turret is going to be going down as there are five members of Omega standing there ready to take it, and they're gonna move right onto the dragon. Yeah, the old scratch is not there for that fight, on. Unfortunately, the Swain uh, wasn't present at all. Did get themselves the mid-tier one turret, but other than that, uh, you could see that they've lost the fight. They're going to lose the Drake, and they're going to lose the turret on the bot lane as a reciprocal as well. So, overall, definitely in favor of Omega Gaming Unleashed right here. You can see they've netted themselves the Dragon now, and with 22 minutes on the clock, they could be working their way towards a fairly early Infernal Soul right here. And with three Infernal Dragons as well, they're going to be quite happy, quite beefy, and quite tanked up in terms of those damage stats. Fallen, Princeton, and Adjustment all going to be looking out to pump out that DPS, and all of those Infernal Dragons are going to do even more work. 
Yeah, and they're on Soul Point now, Rudude. So they've just got to wait on up for the next one, and then they're going to have access to so much damage for the entire rest of the game. This is really going to be the last stand for Darkseid in about four and a half minutes there, as they just need to find a way to win a fight and or take a dragon, or force being choked, or risk being choked out of the game, rather. And that's, that's sort of what we were scared of with the composition that Darkseid drafted for themselves. We were looking at it about nine minutes in saying, well, you know, it's still even. Unleashed haven't fallen behind yet. And at this point, are they ever going to? And the answer was indeed no. Uh, well, there's still a chance for the Dark Side squad to try and make something happen. They are 3,000 gold down. It's not insurmountable here. And if you, obviously, with a few nice picks, a couple of side lane plays, they could definitely look to make an advantage happen somewhere. Typically, you want to be focusing the global, so maybe we see them try and target the Shen. But looking at some Alcrum's items, he's got himself that Frostfire Gauntlet, got the Bramble Vest as well. An extra Ruby Crystal on top with the Merc Treads, making it incredibly difficult to not only keep him down for long enough to, to deal damage, but the CC duration is just going to get immune as well, making it really difficult to take anybody out of Omega Gaming Unleashed. Yeah, certainly is going to be. See Banshee's Veil coming on through there, as you said. And plus, just all the survivability ultimates. They, I, we were already talking about Stand United and Lamb's Respite, but they also have access to the Unbreakable Will from the Alistair, so he's never a target that you can engage onto. And Princeton and Adjustment are just playing so well around the fact that they're on immobile champions and that they need to keep on back. They aren't pushing past their limits, and as a result, there's only one death between the two of them so far this whole game. Yeah, Gale Force is a really huge item for the of all for both of these ADCs here, to be honest. So. Uh, well, uh, it's incredibly important to see these items coming on through and now Fallen going to be looking to make the most of it up on coach. Yeah, going to at minimum interrupt the die, or interrupt the recall, but likely going to be going for the kill here. The Rams for Spike comes on through just to make sure that no turnaround kills can happen, and now the rest of the team comes on through. Some Alcrim and the sub come through just to get their names on that kill, and it's going to be an easy pickup for them from there. Coach goes down, and now Adjustment, finding himself engaged on the Onslaught of Shadows, comes through. He gets fleeing, even though he flashed away, and he's going to get taken down by crits there pretty easily. Maybe a little bit overstepping with four members in the top lane. Now going to be the side of dark side with a little bit of control in the spot lane for the first time this game yeah they they wanted that kill onto adjustment right there and they got it they did expend a lot of cooldowns and a lot of utility to make it happen they started off with the tempered fate which went wide and then finally with that grand scar skyfall coming on through and the uh combination of zongi roaming through the jungle they're able to pick up adjustment just a little bit hesitant to use the flash right there uh, if he uses the flash to get away from the hecarim then probably going to be okay in the first place but uh, he trying to greed his summoner spells uh, and to be honest when they're so far ahead I don't I don't mind the play but it does cost him quite dearly here we've got dragon coming up in 1 minute 40 and those summoner spells aren't going to be available which is going to make him a very big target for the rest of dark side yeah, certainly will be. They will not be up in time for the dragon there, but the uh, ultimates of Dark Side certainly will be. They have about 90 seconds to go here, and that's enough time to get the ultimate from Pantheon back, to get the Onslaught of Shadows back, to get the Tempered Fate back, and to look for that all-important fight that they're going to need, because if they end up losing soul, that's going to be curtains. Yeah, and it's important then with these Drake fights coming up soon, uh, how far are we away from breakpoints for everybody on the squad right now? Swain is a... Uh... Looking to complete himself, that's on Yuzawa Glass, but importantly, has got a stopwatch in case he doesn't manage to get there. Pantheon, two items, Hecarim, two items, and Silas as well, working toward that Demonic Embrace very nicely. On the other side, Omega Gaming Unleashed, Shen is very close to his completed item right there. We've got Kindred, already two and a half items with the Essence Reaver, and not really looking like Princeton is going to be able to finish that tier item just yet, but already at the two items as well. You can see the items pretty much matched up. For the most part, we're really waiting to see if the bot laners can pick up that uh, pick up that slack, and then we'll see like a very fair, very even two or two item versus two item squad coming up against one another. Yeah, we will, and we can see Omega immediately taking control in this bot side. They're just sweeping out all the wards they can find. They're throwing down the pink wards to make sure that they have the control that they want. But in turn, Dark Side gonna get that mid priority, gonna start to shove in this wave and make sure that they can get some control back for themselves. Now they're going back, doing the exact same thing, just clearing away these wards, trying to make sure they have the position oh, advantage. On the but now there's an engage coming in from the sub as he goes in for the pulverized headbutt combo, and now Crits and Coach find themselves on the wrong side of dodge. They're 
Wizard in here with their jungler, but possibly not going to be for long, as now there's going to be an engage going in on to Fallen Artemis. He throws down the Lambs of Swipe to try to stay alive for longer, but Coach has already gone down. Fallen Artemis going to get taken down in return, though. Old Scratch is at full HP. He's Demonic Ascending right in front of everybody. He gets the shutdown down out of the sub, but now the carries of Omega are untouched, and they're going to be able to pick up some kills for themselves. A triple kill ends up going to Shen in that fight. Simulcrum able to actually pick up quite a few kills, Watch and he wants more as he dives right over onto Rice every meal. He gets away with the Blast Cone, going to prevent the escape from Bard there, and is now just going to be able to chase him down on his own. An unofficial quadra for the Shen in this fight, and the soul for the side of Omega. Yeah, they're going to be more than happy with that fight right there. It goes incredibly well for them. They might need to net themselves the Infernal Soul, as well as the Infernal Dragon. Simalcom gets himself four kills, just walking around, booping people with his little blade, doing as much damage as he could right there. It's not the target that you're expecting to dish out the damage with that Frostfire and the Thornmail completed, but leaving a Shen untouched, that Spirit Blade passing through you, can definitely be a cause for concern. Uh, and I really liked the Lambris Sprite as well from Fall. Managed to buy time and pretty much just allowed a Mega Gaming Unleashed to, to start themselves again and reassess the team fight. They got themselves pretty much a second engage right there with that Lambs Respite going down. And I, it looks like for a second, Old Scratch might be the one to come up huge for Darkseid. Unfortunately, just lacking the damage and not quite having that full 100 to 0 burst onto adjustment onto Princeton. Meant that they weren't able to find the fight. And now with the Infernal Soul at their back, we're looking to see if Omega Gaming Unleashed can net themselves this Baron and start to close out the game. Yeah, that Demonic Ascent has a lot of damage potential in it, but it's more of a sustained damage tool with a big burst at the end. It's not the kind of thing that you could really 100 to 0 out the carries of the opposing team with. You need the backup of your team, but Crits and Coach just found themselves blowing everything on the front line really early into that fight. They were just trying to melt through the sub as he went for the engage, and he's just able to tank up through it, survive it all, and allow the damage dealers to get done what they need to get done. Fallen Artemis ends up falling at the end of the day, but he was also Let's able go. to stay alive for so long and pump out so much damage. Damage. Now, maybe an engage going through here, but the Hex Flash goes the opposite way. Although, it looks like Zongi just going to walk on into it anyway. Going to oh. get pulverized and going to get executed down by Fallen Artemis. Just drops him like some GameStop stock there. Yeah, PTA going on through to pick up that kill. I love the GameStop reference. But yeah, they net themselves the jungler. That is going to be the Baron right now, Fallen Artemis. More than happy to tank this one up and... Maybe not going to be so happy for the foreseeable future as he's going a little bit low, but either way, Baron going to come over for Omega Gaming Unleashed. They're now going to be able to split the map quite easily. Princeton is more than capable of handling anybody in the side lane with his three completed items. Simalcom as well in the exact same position with that Negatron Cloak. Doesn't feel too bad about his fighting up against the Silas, but he might do with three more people. Yeah, Coach going in for the fight here as Kritz comes in with the Grand Starfall, but the Infernal Soul, given Smelkrum so much damage, he might end up turning it in onto Coach there. Not enough damage at the end of the day, though. Ends up getting shut down by Silas. So much gold on that uh, Shen, given his quadra kill from the last fight. And now it's just going to be the sub. He's going in on Rice every meal. He realizes, you know what? If Shen can do damage, I can do damage too. He's just going to throw down those Infernal Soul procs, get as much damage on Rice as he can, and just be walking on feeling pretty good about himself. He has access to the ultimate if he needs it, he finally pops it here as the rest of his team is coming in, just trying to bait people farther and farther in. The Deadly Flourish comes through to try to CC some people, and finally the sub has had enough, although does he get to escape <laughs> he's as he's dead. going untempered, faded down, and now here comes an engage from Zongi. This is their opportunity as they do take down the sub. Two members of Omega have now fallen down as Crit's just trying to back on up here. He throws up the Aegis, but he's got the Death uh, Storm on top of him and ends up falling to the Chaos Storm from the side of victor that is going to be a one for two i guess in the extended play at the end of the day but smalcrum he's already back up and he has two different ways to teleport across the map yeah take a break gordon that was wonderful but yeah you know at least they're getting a little bit too aggressive and a bit too big for their boots in that instance they do net themselves a couple of turrets across the summoner's rift and uh uh, I mean, to be honest, Sub was more than capable of tanking up those members, just didn't have the support from the rest of the team right there. You can see Fallen Adjustment and uh, Ar uh, Fallen Adjustment and Princeton all still full HP, so uh, maybe could have helped out a little bit more right there. Doesn't really matter, though, because they're going to be able to siege onto this bot lane tier 3, going to be able to net themselves not only the inhibitor turret, but most likely the inhibitor as well. Might have to fight their way out, though. We've got four people coming through. Not looking like that is going to be the case and with the bot lane inhibitor going down that is going to overlap with the respawn of the elder dragon so a little bit of pressure constantly going on through going to look really good for unleashed as they try and close out with this secondary objective yeah a little bit of a formality here that's why you can see all the members of omega just kind of 
messing around, memeing a bit, you know, seeing how much damage they could do with these tanks if they can end up getting some solo kills for themselves. As they're just waiting up for the Elder to spawn here, it's going to be where they probably make their last stand on the side of Dark Side, and where they got to try to look for any opportunity they can find for themselves here is it is going to be a long road back if they're going to be able to find it. <laughs> a very long road indeed. They're going to be trying to travel from the east to the west coast at this point, trying to make that journey on all successful. So, uh, rule or oh, step number one is secure yourself vision in your own jungle to begin with. You're so far behind at this stage that your own jungle isn't particularly safe. Fortunately enough, Unleashed have taken their resets and for the time being, it looks as though they might be able to make some dents into their own jungle and maybe put a couple of defensive wards down and light a path at least to that Drake pit. But you can see that with the sweepers, with all of the control wards as well that are coming through from Omega Gaming, there's really nothing that they don't see and there's not a whole lot on the other side that Darkseid do see for themselves with Drake now just 40 seconds away. Omega Gaming just need to keep on top of the vision, make sure that nobody's getting in for free and as soon as they do, really start trying to punish them. Yeah, and you can see that Darkseid knows that this is their last stand here. Zongi picking up the Elixir of Iron there just for the last little bits of stats he can get coming into this last fight. Wants to be able to stay alive a bit longer to be the front line that his team needs him to be as they're all just grouping around here trying to push in their last few waves. Oh, oh and there's no. possible for the sub there, but he gets tempered faded right as he flashes, so not going to be able to follow up on it. Well played there by Rice every meal to prevent the Alistair from coming into his team. Oh, sub, you do hate to see those after a, such a stellar Alistair so far. That's just the last thing that he'll have wanted to do, unfortunately. Uh, losing his flash, but still has the Hex flash. It's, for, well, fortunately enough, I suppose, not too big a deal. And we can see right now, Omega Gaming only starting up the Elder Dragon. Smalcom's in the mid lane as well, and he can even go into the base here if they're trying to take the fight. Smalcom going right, to use Stand United. Down, but he just pops the Unbreakable Will and gets the Shed oh, wow. on top of him. He's invulnerable, baby. As Zongi just going to get easily melted down there by the side of the Jin, And now Fallen Artemis just dancing around this fight, trying to do as much damage as he can. Crits has jumped into the back line and been able to pick up adjustment there at the end of the day. But without a jungler, Fallen Artemis just going to take that Elder Drake for himself and for his team. It's going to be a three-for-one fight so far. And now Rice Every Meal, he's going to get breathed on. He's going to get taken down by Fallen Artemis. <laughs> yeah, and look at the base as well. Hop on board with Samalcom right here. Going to be putting the finishing touches onto these last few minions. Trying to do their duty defending the base, but it's really not going to be enough right here. The respawn time is just a little bit too long. And with Elder at the, dra at the back of them, if Crits even tries to step up, he's surely just going to fall. Ooh, that's a that's a max range taunt right there. That's uh that's frostfire gauntlet diff, Rudy. <laughs> that's dude, a frostfire gap. But yeah, well, that doesn't land if you build a different item. So they're just gonna easily melt through the nexus there, and that's gonna be game one going to the side of Omega Gaming Unleashed. Yeah, beautiful stuff, really. Uh, weathering that early game storm, which we'd identified that they'd need to, uh, and from then on, they just looked incredibly confident. They got themselves the second Drake, and nothing else particularly looked like it was gonna go uh, uh, in on the contrary to that so i mean great stuff really to begin with good start to the best of two still got another game to go of course and uh, they'll be looking to try and net themselves their first series win here yeah they certainly will they've gone one and one so far a couple of times once last week and once already this week but a clean 2-0 would certainly feel good in the pockets of omega after last week's one and three performance now, going to be looking at the post-game stats a little bit here, and that really tells you all you need to know. We're not able to really get going on the side of Dark Side. We're able to withstand the early aggression on the side of Omega, and we're able to just scale up like we said they needed to. Maybe going to need a different look from Dark Side coming into the next game, which we are going to be getting into very shortly. So we're going to take a quick break here while we get on into the next lobby, but do not go anywhere. We will be right back with Champ Select for Game 2. Welcome back, everybody, to tonight's stream of the XLNC Mid-League. We are getting right into picks and bans for Game 2 of Omega versus Darkseid. We have flipped over the sides here. going to be Omega on blue and Darkseid on red for this game. My name is once again Gordo, and I am once again joined by Rudude for these picks and bans. And Rudude, what new look do you think we're going to see this game? Do you know what? It's going to be a, a game of adaptation, right? Darkseid... Uh, either need to change up how they play or what they play. Uh, and I'll be interested to see which one they opt into here because if you change how you play, then it suggests that you've got confidence in the draft and that maybe you were just lacking your own execution and that you, 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 you know, you, you've recognized your mistakes and you can run it back and you can do it again. But if we, uh, on the other side, if they go for the what we play, 
uh, suggests that maybe they're going to play a bit more to their play style of, well, we didn't really want to do too much in the early game, so we're just going to pick some early game uh champions that don't really do anything and then we'll go for champions that scale into the late game quite nicely uh, and try and take a nice 5v5 with one another at the end yeah and adaptation number one coming through already is dark side has banned away the shen that was busted out by simulcrum last game not going to be seeing that one hit the table this game as we're gonna see they got one more band to go here and we're gonna see what does omega want to take with the first pick dark side claimed that pantheon immediately last game and it did not really have the impact they might have wanted no it definitely did not have the uh possession or the the presence rather across the map that pantheons typically command and unfortunately uh you can you can see that they're uh, not going to have to ban it away for game number two either. I'd definitely like to see Darkseid pick it up again. Pantheon is an incredibly strong champion, and if it's piloted well, can definitely have impacts across the map. But Omega here, uh, with their first pick up, going to be interested to see whether they go for something like the Kindred, like uh, the Fallen would have wanted, or if they opt into something uh, more prioritized in the jungle. So, I don't know, something like the Lilia, something like Nidalee that we've seen a lot of, but not really seen that too much down in the lower elos. It is going to be the Kaiser to come through for adjustment. That adaptation that Darkseid made to ban out the Shen, going to net adjustment the Kaiser. Yeah, and there's been some BM going around on Twitter towards B1 Kaisa, but I'm a I'm a big B1 Kaisa fan. I feel like it is the strongest AD carry right now. Uh in in a vacuum, you know, with specific Samira comps, maybe you could expect that to be a bit better. And maybe even the Seraphine bot lane looking a little bit overpowered lately. But I'm a big fan of what Kaisa's been able to bring in the new season. Just gives you so much flexibility and so much power in that bot lane role. Yeah, and I'm particularly a fan of Kaisa into the gin right here. Yes, Jin typically a more lane dominant ad carry but as we get into that late game where kaiser definitely thrives the the, the kaiser just absolutely dominates Jin if she can get on top of him that being the crucial part of course is if the Jin gets you know uh, capitalized on by kaiser that the kaiser can pretty much just rain hell hellfire down onto the Jin before he's even popped two autos through typically you like to see the aphelios answer to a kaiser because you can also you can not only dominate them in the laning phase but also have a bit more possibility at clapping back at them in the later stages of the game as well uh, we do see alistair being picked up by Darkseid, so the sub going to be removed. His pick that's been so dominant, at least for the last couple of games. Galio picked up here for Omega Gaming Unleashed. Could go mid lane, could go support, but going to be a nice answer, at least in that bot side of the map. Kaiser Galio, a fairly lethal duo. Yeah, and the Galio, considered one of the better supports into the Alistair as well, just ends up being able to trade very well there, is able to land those taunts and is oh. able to. It, and, Ooh, and that is going to be also a Camille coming through, likely for the side of Smalcrum. The Camille Galio, a very deadly duo there, and something that might imply that maybe it won't be a Galio support after all. Maybe that's going to be something for Princeton to go up there and to make some excellent early game plays up into the top lane with those dual ultimates from Camille Galio. Okay, God, I don't know if you know this, but we're going dive in today. We're going down into the depths of Dark Side's team right here. We've got Kaiser, Galio, and Camille all picked up already to dive into the enemy backline. This Jin not going to have a fun time. I can tell you that for sure. Alistair going to have an incredible responsibility to try and keep the Jin alive as much as possible. And if Malphite as well, he's going to be using his ulti for disengage, more so for engage, it feels like. Unless, of course, Darkseid absolutely rolled the draft, uh, or, or rolled the game, rather. We will have to wait and see, of course, how that develops. But for now, Omega... Just going to try and focus on finding more engaged mid laners that they can pick up. Finding an engaged jungle as well to follow up with that is going to be pretty important. Something that pairs nicely with Camille. Uh, you know, that Hecarim does spring to mind. It's a very dive heavy jungler that they could look towards. And Darkseid on the other end of the team have got to try and find something to disengage with. Because Malphite, yes, he's got some nice slows and a good ultimate for team fighting, But might not be the quintessential uh, pick that they're looking toward for that really nice disengage. Yeah, and with no jungler picked up for either side in round one, we are going to be seeing the Kindred hit the ban list for the side of Dark Side. Not going to be seeing that for Fallen Artemis this time around. And with a, quite a few mid lane bans now hitting the table as well, you're going to have to wonder what is Crit going to want to go for here? Uh, cannot can still go for the Pantheon like last game if he feels like it, Ooh. but likely isn't going to want to. But could it have been his Malphite all along? Maybe he's had a mid lane pick already. <laughs> it could be here, and I'm definitely intrigued by the prospect of AP Malphite, actually. Uh, a lot of really nice AP items that a Malphite can build into, and if we do end up seeing that one come through, it will be a turn up for the books, but it could definitely 
play into Darkseid's composition as of, of, you know, instead of just matching or instead of trying to pair the uh, hard engage from Omega with disengaging Darkseid, if they just go hard engage with their own, just fight fire with fire, we never know what's going to happen here. And Omega, they net themselves the Echo, could go into the jungle, could go into the mid lane. Typically, this is a more fallen Artemis oriented pick. Uh, and we will wait and see because, of course, Omega going to have to pick up their mid slash jungle for their B5 pickup right here. Going to be the Karma coming through here so we do see a little bit of a pivot here we've always remember or always had to remember that Galio has been expected to go down to that support role but there's a chance that we see it go into the mid lane here we see a karma kaiser bot lane and something really focused on trying to buffer trying to buff up adjustment keeping him safe definitely going to be worthwhile here recognizing the dive that dark side have got omega just pedaling back a little bit here trying to give the kaiser a little bit of safety with the karma yeah, and I think it is going to be the Karma support here. I like the Galio Camille duo as a mid and top lane setup, and I do like that ranged, uh, harassing kind of midway mid, uh, or sorry, midway mage slash enchanter support that Karma brings to a bot lane, especially when you know you're going to be facing off against that Alistair. Meanwhile, it is going to be the Syndra locked in for the mid lane, going to try to bully that Galio if they can, as we are going to assume it's going to be Echo Jungle. Yeah, the the Echo almost certainly going to slot into the jungle, and obviously in the mid lane, the Syndra pick up here for Dark Side is they've saved this counter pick, this R five pick up here for the mid lane. It's a fairly standard mid laner here, and with all of the mid bands that we've seen already throughout the draft, with Ori, Yone, and Yasuo taken off the table, I really like the idea of picking Syndra into this composition. You know, we've identified that Omega have got themselves quite a few carries to be dealing with here. But if Syndra can take one of them off the board, going to be making their job quite easy in terms of just making sure that they're all uh, topped off and nice and healthy in that back line. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what is likely the Volibear jungle coming on through for the side of Dark Side this game. Not something I've seen have a lot of success so far this season, but going to be... Uh, coming through this game, nonetheless, going to be facing off against Fallen Artemis's Echo Jungle, uh, something I also haven't seen much of this season. No, I know that uh, Echo Jungle is is really how uh, the only squad like to pair dive into their jungle role, right? And as well, uh, we can look across at Omega's squad and sort of recognize, well, we've got Camille top lane. Uh, our AP source at the minute is Galio and Karma. They're not the most hard-hitting AP carries to be looking for. And um, with Kaiser as well, you do have a little bit of mixed damage, but it's always good to get yourself that hard AP jungler in the Echo, getting yourself a little bit of assassination potential as well. Syndra or Jin mispositions just a little bit. Fallen will not be hesitant to try and dive into that backline, and nor will the rest of Omega, by the way way uh, we can always talk about all of the engage that they've got mantra inspire coming through from karma as well could definitely enable all of that engage you don't even have to be on the same screen for camille and galio to try and find the access to the backline targets yeah and for the side of omega let's talk about circles rude because there's going to be some <laughs> big circles coming through from the omega team there's going to be the hextech ultimatum coming down from the camille which is going to is more of a hexagon really yeah. but it's going to keep everybody locked in and then there's going to be these big galio ultimate and also the parallel convergence from echo coming in to try to land even more stuns the parallel convergence is going to take up a pretty sizable chunk of that Camille ultimate and is going to enable some bad chain CC to come through in that top lane uh, when all three of them decide to head on up there and try to bully coach's Malphite. Yeah, and, and with that sort of team fight oriented dive composition that Omega have drafted for themselves, it becomes incredibly important for Darkseid to work on their team fight positioning and on their team spacing just in general. We can see they've drafted themselves three frontliners, two backliners, right? They need that space to be bought and this time round in a game like this when you're looking for Camille flanks, looking for Echo flanks, looking for the uh, the wards and all of that good stuff for Camille to find access, we're not going to be sitting with a traditional three in the front, two in the back sort of situation. I expect and would hope for sort of an arrowhead formation coming on through you can imagine them sat in the mid lane we want one tank off to the right one tank off to the left and then another one set a little bit further forward in the lane just so that they've got all of their angles covered because if they don't like we've already alluded to finding access into the backline is incredibly easy for omega gaming unleashed here 
And by the way, Rudy, it is the sub on the Galio and Princeton on the okay. Karma. At least that's how the initial picks have gone on through. So it looks like it might be a Karma mid lane and a Galio bot lane. We were already talking about Galio, pretty favorable matchup into that Alistair there. And it should be a good matchup uh, in the bot lane for the side of Omega. I like Kaisa Galio against Jin Alistair. Feels like it has a lot of room to work in that bot lane and can potentially find themselves another 2v2 win. They were able to pretty handedly win the 2v2 against the side of dark side in game one and they're going to be looking to replicate that success yeah i really I, I i like kaiser and galio as a bot lane duo the galio gives two stacks of plasma also gives a route out for the kaiser should anything go particularly wrong you know doesn't have to fire any auto attacks doesn't have to land that void seeker before the uh killer instinct can be used defensively or offensively might we add karma not quite having the same or the same agency when it comes to enabling the Kaiser in terms of getting in and out of fights. You know, it has, uh, you know, a good chunk of poke damage in the Karma and does help buff up the Kaiser in terms of shielding in the laning phase. But overall, the Galio providing a little bit more in terms of aiding the Kaiser in the damage output that she can do. Yeah, it certainly does here. And this is where I get a little bit concerned for the side of Dark Side because we've been talking so much about this heavy engage from Omega, but we aren't really seeing a matched level of disengage from the side of Dark Side. You've got Rice Every Meal on the Alistair to try to pulverize people and headbutt them away. You've got some targeted CC from the Vala Bear, and you could try to push people away with Syndra, but not really assigned to some of the like big mobility tools that you might expect to see or the big survivability tools that you might expect to see from a dedicated disengage comp instead the side of dark side has some heavy engage of their own with the malphite ultimate but they're just going to need to rely on their own positioning to prevent getting caught out by this camille especially when she's getting sped up by the karma yeah i mean uh dark side have put themselves in a bit of a difficult spot with the draft right here i won't lie they have obviously got just the two carries that they're going to be reliant on and on the other side for Omega Gaming here. They have got three, so, you know, Karma going to be looking toward that Moonstone Renewer as well, so will be falling off in terms of the damage departments, but just finding access onto that backline should typically be so easy. We, we've said it so many times and we can echo it a hundred more times because it's going to be the nature of this game right here. Positioning from dark side going to be incredibly important and then on the other side, just finding the flanks, finding the angles here. Omega Gaming Unleashed should really be looking to try and take this game fairly convinced with a heavy dive composition and let's see if they're going to be able to do it we are going to have to take a quick break to get loaded up into game here but to not go anywhere we are going to be right back with the final game of the night between omega gaming and dark side Welcome back, everybody. We are right into game two of Darkseid versus Omega in the XLNC mid league. This is going to, I gotta believe, be the final game of the night for the whole <laughs> league. My name is Gordo, and joining me as late as ever is going to be Rude Dude. And Rude Dude, are you ready for the final game of the night? I definitely am, Gordo. Going to be excited to see uh, a different look here for Omega Gaming Unleashed, right? Game number one. Oh, the, the first game, at least, of this set that we got to cover, they went for a very relaxed approach to the game and just sort of won by playing and doing nothing in the first 10 minutes or so. And don't get me wrong, that's not a, a, a criticism of them. They played it incredibly well to net themselves the advantages down bot lane and all of that good stuff. Uh, but this time around, they're going to have the burden of execution. They're the ones that have to try and find their engages, find their fights. Uh, and this more execution-oriented composition... Definitely going to be a different take for them from what we've seen, and I'm going to be interested to see how they manage to capitalize on their advantages. Yeah, certainly going to be, and maybe a bit more of a standard composition than we've seen out of Dark Side a lot of their games so far in this league. We've seen some of those crazy carry top laners coming out of coach quite a bit thus far. He was playing a lot of Silas, some Pantheon top. We've also seen quite a bit of those carry mid laners coming through. We've seen Yasuo, Irelia, Yone, and stuff like that coming out of crits. So kind of changing it up here going for stuff a little bit more standard and we're going to see what dark side looks like on that kind of composition we'll be interesting to see of course how both of these teams adapt coming from games one to two we've already talked about the adaptations that they've made in the draft and the adaptations in styles and it'll be interesting to see whether or not they're they're, they're practiced and well versed in this instance here going to be looking to make sure that Really, not giving over any advantages in the early game for Omega because they're looking to, to try and keep themselves ahead of the pace for pretty much the entire lane and the entire game, really, more so than anything else. If they're able to get
get themselves just a little bit of a lead, their snowball potential once again is going to be absolutely massive here with all of their dive and all of their capability to find access to the back line. It's going to be able to be uh, really dominant as at least as the game goes on. Yeah, certainly going to be here, and want to pay close attention to this mid lane matchup as we're going to see Princeton going early aggression on to crits here, be able to land out more of those skill shots, and has so far been dodging away from the Qs, and now is going to be going aggressively as he hits level three first in this mid lane. Going to force crits a little bit farther back, going to be taking priority for himself. An important note about that mid lane as well. Princeton is actually going to be able to cheat a recall here, so it looks like he's going to be able to push that wave all the way under the turret, get a reset off, pick up maybe a Dark Seal, an Amp Tome, whatever it may be, uh, and get back toward that laning phase uh, without missing too much under the turret, as well as the fact that there was an XP gap from the ward that was given over by Fallen Artemis into that mid lane, so Karma actually hit level 2 initially after the first 6 minions, which meant that, he, uh, that Princeton was able to take some really nice trades in the mid lane up against crits because he didn't have that same level 2 advantage and the shield really just mitigating all of the dark sphere damage meant that karma been able to be going up into a good position at least in this early laning phase and you can see as he's returned back to the lane going to be right back there with an extra amp tome and uh no, not down any cs and even with more minions to be farming up yeah it's going to be clearing away these waves and karma are uh, quite the actually potent roamer once she actually gets going and is able to get priority in that mid lane, is able to move around the map incredibly quickly just by shielding herself and getting all of those move speed boosts that come with it. And I'm going to even have some potential ganks coming through as she's able to use that tether to snare people down if she can find a way to get behind them. So really want to watch Princeton here and see if he's able to make some of these plays happen with this early lead he's gained for himself can already tell that he's trying to push the wave a little bit here, trying to at least match the pressure that Syndra can put out in terms of wave clear, and we will have to be cognizant of any roams going off from that mid lane, but of course in the early game, uh, those roams can be pretty impactful, but also pretty detrimental if they do go wrong or if they are mistimed. I'm going to be interested to see how Zongi's pathing plays out right here. It's got two camps on the top side that he's just not farming, but does show. Yeah, he's sneaking around into this bot lane here. He flashes forward to try to go on for the sub here, and he might be able to get first blood for himself there, but the heal comes through from adjustment to keep him alive a little bit longer. Fallen Artemis is here in the wings, but the fight seems to have already ended, so likely just going to be farming up his golems here. Yeah, and uh, overall the gank coming through burns a couple of summoner spells right there, but Alistair burns flash, Volibear burns flash, and in response, sub uses his and adjustment uses the heal, so it's two summoner spells for two summoner spells right now. Fallen Artemis is getting a really big lead as well while all this is going on because Volibear is also taking Dragon while Fallen is going to be able to pick up pretty much an entire clear of his jungle in response. So yes, they might lose this early game Cloud Dragon, but the Echo is going to be so far ahead of the Volibear who's down at the minute, two or three camps. He's going to be able to farm all of those up, but he's going to be behind in tempo, behind on a play. And in a couple of minutes, maybe about 30 seconds to a minute or so, Fallen Artemis should be able to do something. That is unless they find Princeton. Yeah, and it looks like they are going to here as they're able to chain all the CC on top of him oh so perfectly. And that's going to guarantee a first blood over to the side of Crits. Princeton not even able to flash there, was just kept down for far too long and ends up going down as a result. Yeah, a, a real lack of respect right there. Knows that they're on the dragon and then stepping up with no vision on the south side of your lane is just... Well, he, he got what he deserved right there for going so, so far forward. Uh, using the hex flash from every rice every meal to... And net the initial CC, and you can just tell with Volibear and Syndra, there's no way of getting out of that one alive. So, unfortunate that he loses out on his life, but not respecting the dive and the potential for the enemies to be there, does get punished. Yeah, certainly does there. And now, we're just going to be seeing top lane here for a little bit as actually a pretty sizable cs lead has been built up by Samalcrim here the malphite was the counter pick taken here into this camille but does not have the early trade potential to really be able to uh to bully her out of lane and so gonna be about a sing oh, one and a half waves of cs uh lead over Samalcrim so far it's really important this top play matchup uh it, it comes down to the camille's execution on tactical sweeps really because coach is pretty much always able to just harass with the seismic sh or the the seismic roll, the little shard, whatever that ability is called, uh, proc comet, proc scorch, uh, and really put the Camille at least a little bit lower in HP. You can see that Smalkin went for that Doran shield to try and mitigate a little bit of that poke. Uh, and the tactical sweeps and their their uses 
I'll what help you build back up your HP pool from that because you get a little bit of health from restore from hitting the outer edge of your little knife leg. And if Smalcom's been able to do that, which we can tell that he has, uh, you're going to be able to mitigate the poke damage from Malphite pretty easily. But if the Malphite's able to dodge out on those and you're not really in a good position, the opposite effect can happen where Camille really does feel bad in the lane. Yeah, we've hit an important moment here, Rudud, as both junglers have ticked over to six, and both junglers this game have such great dive potential when they have access to their ultimates. Gecko able to just blink right on out of there with the time rewind, and Volibear able to turn off towers entirely. So going to be looking to see who is able to crash their waves in and enable these dives to happen. But it looks like that might not even happen as long as he's just making a beeline for the bot lane. Yeah, fortunately enough, there was a ward in the river brush, so uh, adjustment was aware, was ready and able to try and take a bit of an absence from that bot lane. I want to draw your attention to these two AD carries, quote in, in quotes here for Omega Gaming Unleashed, and uh, their item paths right here because they've both opted into the cull is the early game option and item of choice here. So you can tell that Omega already trying to buy into this late game scaling style and trying to go for more team fights as we get later into the game. Uh, which, which doesn't necessarily hurt them at all because we can look at their composition and just acknowledge so much late game potential. And now in the bot side, sub going in is a little bit risky. Yeah, just looking for a little bit of a trade there. Just going to punch on to Scratch, get him taunted for a couple seconds while his team is able to pick up the Rift Herald. Did like that play from Fallen Artemis here. And now here's a gank play coming in from the side of Omega. Really They're good. going to lock down Coach in the Hextech Ultimatum. He's going to be forced to flash on away. Fallen Artemis just going to chase him under the turret, ult himself right back on out. And that's going to be TPs. the first kill camp to Omega. But now here comes a likewise dive in the bot lane. It's going to get turned off by the Volibear Ultimate. But now just going to be a killer instinct away from adjustment. Now, can he dodge away? from these shots from Din. He dodges one, he dodges two, no. here comes... No, it gets taken down. It's going to be Old Scratch picking up a kill on to Adjustment. Yeah, and in exchange for not teleporting down there, it looks like some Alcum and Fallen are really putting the damage down onto this turret. Rift Herald summoned as well. Well, like they were trying to go for the whole thing. They're only going to get four of the five plates, but Smalcom going to be given a huge lead right there. Uh, An adjustment going to be the sacrificial lamb here for Omega Gaming Unleashed in the bot side. So, uh, you know, we're, we're splitting them up already here. We've got Camille and Echo on the top side starting to generate advantage for themselves, where down on the bot side, <laughs> adjustment and sub going to be the ones a little bit left out by the wayside. Yeah, adjustment and sub just sticking around too much under their turret there. I know in most matchups you feel safe with that turret for protection, but Stormbringer just does not care and is going to turn that turret right on off and force adjustment out. He does use the killer instinct plus flash to get himself on out, but just can't survive and can't keep himself from getting hit by two of the curtain call shots and eventually being taken down. And I wonder what we see happen around this dragon right here, because we can see that the river is completely commanded by Darkseid right here. They've got three control wards in and around not only the river, but one extended just a little bit into Fallen's red side jungle here. And uh, Adjustment is obviously quite happy to just keep farming up down on this bot side, but with Drake already picked up or, or already spawned, they haven't really got the vision down. They haven't got the established priority around the map, and Princeton now going to get caught in the mid again again and getting himself flashed on. In comes the Galio ultimate to try to keep him alive and it does knock up all three targets and it's actually going to keep Princeton from getting engaged on. He's just able to hold them down long enough and now Fallen Artemis is coming in on the flank to try to make something happen but he can only get on Rice every meal whose will is unbreakable and as is his body. Uh, importantly, some Alcum's TP does get cancelled right there so Coach using the unstoppable force to prevent Smalcom from making his way down with the TP means that this is going to be a committed four versus four on the bot side around that dragon and these two top lane is just going to scrap it out for supremacy of the top side. Yeah, now looking at this dragon here is it is going to be a 4v4 here. Neither top laner has access to the teleport and neither top laner has a global this game. So just going to be on their own little island while the four member squads of each team show up here and now that's going to be an all-in from Samalkram in the top lane though gets the Hextech ultimatum down onto coach but he is still under the turret so cannot chase him any farther and now here comes the flank there's going to be a big stun coming in through from Fallen Artemis and they're just going to focus down onto Zongi and they're going to get him that means that there is no smite available for the side of Dark Side, and that is going to be Dragon going over to the side of Omega Gaming Unleashed they are just forced to retreat Really nice stuff there from Omega as well. Not only do they manage to go in and stop the Drake from happening, pick up a kill, pick up the Dragon as well. Uh, some of the smaller things that are going in their favor right there was that they spent time farming up bot lane as well. So the entire time that the old Scratch and every Rice Meal were just there uh, hanging around the Dragon, Adjustment was getting farmed. That's leveled up the gap from when they got Dove earlier uh, and narrowed that experience gap 
extended this CS lead for adjustment there uh, and really neutralized everything that they did on the dive earlier and also just putting a little bit more into adjustments pocket. They net themselves the kill that goes on to, unfortunately, the sub. But at the end of the day, you've got to be happy with the overall trade. Yeah, the sub loves taking away, you know, maybe <laughs> just one of these kills. Pretty much every game you can see, he ends up picking one up with the ignite or something of the sort at the end of the day. And you know, it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good morale boost for the team when the sub, you know, is able to pick up a kill on one of these tanky frontliners. <laughs> and, and of course, in this game, we've seen the uses of Galio come through to full force already. We've just seen him use the hero's entrance to save uh, the. Or rather to save Princeton right there in the mid lane. So we are seeing a little bit of a, a pivot from what the Galio can do. We are, of course, expecting it to be this heavy dive-oriented composition. But, hey, you know, Galio, great at diving, great at disengaging as well. We saw them all go hell for leather onto the Karma. But that Galio ulti provided a lot of safety, provided a lot of distancing. And we could see that maybe come through if we see a focus onto adjustment as well. Yeah, we certainly could, and Fallen Artemis is sitting on that Dark Seal as well, has now got three stacks on that from the kill he was able to pick up earlier and the assist he was able to get in the last fight. So maybe looking to snowball a little bit harder on this Echo pick certainly does have the potential to be a very dangerous assassin if you can get enough gold on it. But now we do have to be careful here. Sub going to be caught out. Does get a double taunt. I might actually just be able to make it to safety. The Flash used uh, as 100% as, as safety right there. Uh, recognizing that maybe just caught a glimpse of Zongi, but the pressure from Omega, we've identified it previously up on the top side of the map is where they've seemed to uh, be more entertained by uh, and not leaving Smalcom to be this week side top, now going to go for the all-in. Yeah, now once again, that's going to be the Hextech ultimatum coming on through, followed up with the parallel convergence. It's going to be an ultimate away from Coach as soon as he's able to, but Fallen Artemis is chasing the rest of the way. He's going to have access to his E soon. He's going to use it. He's going to blink to Coach, and he is going to pick up that kill. That is the beauty of Echo there, is that he can just keep diving deeper and deeper. Even if somebody from Dark Side shows up, he can just ult right back on out of there and zip away. He is now 2-0-1 on this Echo, 100% KP, and is looking like he's going to get the snowball that he wants. And importantly... Uh, Zongi was spotted out on a ward inside the enemy's inside their own jungle and uh, is not going to be able to find a reciprocal dive down on the bot side so they're going to be able to net themselves first turret for the Camille Echo duo they're going to be able to net themselves Rift Herald as well which means that they can extend their advantages across the rest of the map and now we're going to have to wait and see if Unleashed can use that bot lane or that top lane priority to start moving it around the rest of the game right here with Adjustment and Sub really playing this weak side bot lane we're going to have to wait and see if they get some love in the end looks like this turret is going to be traded out just a little bit uh, and Zongi might go a little bit aggressive but Samalcom is here Ooh, the sub going right back on in because Samalcom is here as you said does not have access to the Hextech ultimatum though not too much lockdown on their side gonna need the sub to be able to find an angle to be able to actually make this fight happen and it does not look like that is going to be the case no, it is going to be the Herald used in the mid lane though here that you need to be careful with the goon squad of Darkseid roaming their way up through the river here Zongi and Crits looking to make their fight happen, but just going to be able to make it to safety. Karma very good at aiding and disengaging this instance, so Rift Herald goes down, and that's another mid-tier one picked up. I mean, I say another, there is only one, but that is the mid-tier one picked up right here, and completely unanswered by Darkseid. Losing that objective, not going to sit too pretty with them. Yeah, and I know it looked there like it might have been very close to Princeton and Fallen Armist getting picked up, but it might not have been as close as it looked. Is it's going to be the Shirelia's Battle Song has been picked up by Princeton there, an item we haven't seen too much of in this season so far, but going to be a big movement speed boost uh, being able to be picked up by that Karma there. Now going to have access to two of them in her kit. Going to really just be looking to zip around the map and be able to enable her teammates, uh, especially the ones who might not be able to have the clearest paths of engage, it, to be able to find those paths that they need and get some hard engage onto the other side. Going to be extremely interesting to see how this one plays out. I want to see the interactions uh, across Summoner's Rift right here with Princeton and using that battle song to aid his engage from the rest of the squad. For now, though, Dragon is spawned, and you can see that Omega Gaming Unleashed, they've got a lot of their team down here. Sir Malcolm waiting off in the wings. He's got teleport, so does Coach. But it is going to be, for the time being, Darkseid, who are the first ones to roam their way in. They've managed to set up a little bit of priority in and around the Drake. But look at Fallen Artemis here, looking for a bit of a flank angle, already looking to establish a pincer maneuver coming on through. TP from Malphite to begin, and Sir Malcolm already here without using his TP. Oh, he's using his now. 
Yeah, he is. He was going back into the base and has now come on through. But now it's going to be Zongi going maybe a little bit more aggressive than he wants to be. He cannot take this 1v1 with Fallen Artemis, so he's going to get chunked out incredibly early. And now oh. the flash in from some from Fallen with the hero's entrance from the sub. Just going to be an easy fight for the side of Omega as they melt through multiple targets. A triple kill goes over to Fallen Artemis just to start it on off. The fourth gets picked up by Adjustment. And Zongi, he was the first one in, and he's the first one out. He's out of there. How good is ADC? The old Scratch must have had a real good time right there. Samalcrum uses the E-Flash combo to get on top of him. They use that Galio ulti, that combination that we've been talking about and waiting to see. Uh, and that team fight, it never looked close. It was an absolute whitewash. What, uh, Mega Gaming Unleashed come in from all three angles right there and they just take down everything. And the, K the Drake as well, bot lane tier one. I Perfect execution on their engage right there. We have Fallen Artemis baiting the Volibear down just to remove a little bit of the front line as well. There's nothing else to say. Yeah, no, so Malcolm sees his entry angle and he goes for it. He knows, you know what, I'm pretty beefy on this Camille. I got my Divine Sunder already completed. And even if they did find somehow find a way onto him, Adjustment and Fallen Artemis and Princeton have more than enough damage to make up for it. He just goes for the engage knowing that the CC is going to follow and knowing that it's going to guarantee a win for his team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, everything comes up clutch. We can even see Echo here has picked up himself a Magi Soul Stealer. So going to be working towards a uh, pretty brutal power spike if he keeps on picking up those kills and those assists. Going to aid him in his cause for pretty much assassination domination, really, throughout the rest of the game right here. Adjustment has got his Q Evolve as well. Already picked up the Kraken Slayer as well. So a lot of damage coming out of this Kaiser. The... Divine Sunderer on Camille as well to try and aid him in his side lane split pushing efforts. Typically, not the the you know top tier item for Camille, but up against things like Malphite, Volibear, and Alistair, you can definitely see why we've seen the Divine here today. Yeah, and the 10 stack Magi's for Fallen Artemis going to be enough to trigger that bonus movement speed. And this is just a fast team from the side of Omega with that battle song with the Karma and now with the bonus movement speed going down onto their Echo. They're just going to be zipping all over this map and they're going to be finding engages I'm sure that none of us are going to expect once Darkseid maybe steps up just a little bit too far. <laughs> yeah, if, if they didn't have enough movement speed in the squad, like you say, with Shrelia's with Karma, the extra bonus that Fallen's going to get from the Magi Soul Stealer as well. Uh, just just going to be the cherry on top of the cake right now. Uh, for the time being though, Unleashed do have to be careful. They can't just go continue to just Rambo through the streets and try and find fights willy-nilly here. They're going to have to be careful, do their due diligence and make sure that they've got all of the members in the correct place before they try and take the fights. I imagine if they manage to find a good 5 versus 5, then they will be able to win it pretty hands down. Uh, but, you know, they have to make sure that they've got everybody there and can't get too overconfident with their positioning. We've got two and a half minutes before the next Drake spawns, which is quite a sizable amount of time. And at the minute, if we're going to see uh, what looks to be a continuation from game one to game two, probably just going to be that fight or fight for Drake's soul and then Baron, Elder, however it may happen to be. But this game round, I want to see something a bit more aggressive from Unleashed right here. They've got this composition that thrives on engaging. They've got themselves a massive gold lead. Six and a half thousand gold to the good at 20 minutes in is more than enough to start taking fights. I want to see them close out the game before we get to that Elder point. Yeah, and they've completely taken over the blue side jungle here of Dark Side. They've got wards everywhere, and they've spotted crits as he's wandering on through there, so he just doesn't feel safe to even continue going up and has to keep going back down towards this bot lane as mid prio just keeps getting taken over here by Omega. They're just going to look to keep on shoving this in, to keep moving up their vision line, and to maybe look for a pick here as Rice Every Meal is trying to move in. Yeah, and uh, you can just tell that the suffocation from Unleashed is coming through little by little here, not allowing Zongi to really farm anything. You can see that he's sponging mid lane XP off of his AD carry, who desperately, desperately needs it. Fallen Artemis is taking away his jungle. Zongi's really not getting anything here to try and farm up with. So this Volibear who's uh, picked up the Turbo Chem Tank is not really getting any income at all at this stage in the game. So any gold that they can find, they're going to be wanting to Sherpa onto the Jin, onto the Syndra, because they're the leading sources of damage. If you don't have the damage to back up the front line, then what use is the front line in the first place? So uh, the game becoming increasingly more and more difficult here for Darkseid. Now down to just a minute on the Dragon, and you can see teams starting to take their resets, starting to try and bide for the vision. I'm going to see that River Dance come through once again. Yeah, getting a little... Irish? Scottish? What, wait, where's River Dancing from? I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that's I'm Irish. Not... All right. Very good. So getting a little Irish with it uh, the, as we're getting in to 
maybe the next dragon of the game, but maybe even looking towards some Baron soon as Omega is significantly ahead in this game and could just try to slam the door shut with that major objective. But for now, just gonna be grouping around the bot lane. They do have that huge choke of vision in the enemy blue side jungle that is just now being cleared away. Uh, but that's only because Omega have recalled, spent some of their huge gold lead, gotten even more movement speed as Staff of Flowing Water has been picked up by Princeton. Uh, and they're just gonna be stacking those up and running all over this map. Yeah, and um, as well, that's, that's just going to particularly aid Fall. And in case there wasn't enough that's keeping the Echo nice and alive with all of the ulti, with the ulti, the shield, Galio on top of him if he gets too brazen with his positioning, uh, you know, that extra movement speed from Staff is going to be increasingly nice as well. Sub, though, with a nice off angle, goes in. Yeah, he gets the three-man taunt onto multiple members, and now Zongi is left alone in front of everybody. He's just going to get taken down, and now here comes the <laughs> flank from the side of Simulcrum. The hero's entrance comes through at the exact same time and is going to knock up the rest of the targets, and now here comes the killer instinct from Adjustment right on top of everybody. They're just melting through the side of Dark Side, and they're just going to take this kill and take this mid lane turret and maybe even more as they're gonna possibly move on to the baron here they are just in absolute control this game extending their gold lead to almost 10k and they're gonna have the baron to get them that last step of the way and and the engaged composition is working out in full force right now that's exactly what they needed to do and sub once again finding the angle finding the engage you know we talked about the potential of this flex pick between karma and galio uh, and i don't want to take away from princeton and his galio capability but what we've seen from sub today at least is there an ability to find the angles and find the engages and putting on something like Karma really does limit him in that instance. Putting him on the Galio, we saw it right there. Three man talk coming on through, started off the fight beautifully. Simalcom coming in on the flank angle as well with the TP. Constantly looking for this Jin, constantly making the old Scratch's life miserable and for the second time here, just gets ulted on and can't even use his flash to safety. Yeah, the sub having an MVP day for himself here as he has just been able, as you said, constantly find these engages. And along with Fallen Artemis, they have been at near 100% KP over the course of both of these games. And they have just been showing absolute dominance. Fallen Artemis in particular now, 7-0-3 on this Echo, has picked up the Lich Bane, has the 20 stacks on his Magi's, and he is a huge threat to any member of Darkseid who finds him in the jungle. It's, it's easy to say, right, that we, we could make a case for, for probably the majority of Omega Gaming Unleashed netting MVP for the series right here. I mean, Fallen with seven kills, three assists right here. He doesn't have to do... He, he's done the hard work in the early game as the jungler to keep his lane sustained and net himself an advantage with the Camille as well. Right now, he's doing the fun part right now. He just walks around, one-taps whoever he pleases, uses his ult to get back to safety if he needs to. If not, hey, he just goes and does it again, rinse and repeat. Uh, the, the seven kills on an assassin with 20, uh, 20 stacks on the Magi's, not something to be snuffed at. And you can see some Alchem as well, more than capable of taking the fight to coach here. If he tries to stick around for too long, you can definitely imagine Samalcom getting a very easy dive off with this Baron buff. Yeah, between the Divine Sunderer and his own Q, he just does not care about all this armor that's been built up by the side of Coach, able to just bust out enough bonus damage to melt right on through him. And now Fallen Artemis oh. just not even going for the dive here, just goes for the turret while Crits enters the stasis. And now there's nothing left to protect you as you come on out, and Princeton's going to pick up that kill easily. Now Fallen Artemis taking the fight even farther, but just going to be backed away from, from the side of Darkness as they are pushing in all three lanes with this Baron buff here and are showing no sign of stopping yeah don't, don't get it mistaken they could have dived onto the car onto the syndra but they just didn't need to the turret was going to fall far too quickly you can see in the top lane lich bane doing absolute work in terms of netting themselves the top lane inhibitor turret going to get them the inhibitor too and here goes the engage yeah, but it's going to be followed up with by a hero's entrance from the sub. And just like that, it's a 3v3, making a 4v3 as adjustment is coming in from the side here. Just melting on right through rice every meal as Zongi going to fall as well. Crit still hasn't even respawned from when he was engaged on earlier. And they're just taking everything here, Rudu. They're going to get all three inhibitors and they're going to look for the base. Yeah, and, and quite rightly so here. Not even needing the soul. It is spawning in 1 minute 20. But honestly, at this point... You've got Sub, who's the same level as the enemy ADC, almost the same level as the jungler as well. It's just not even looking good. Game going to be closed out. A first 2-0 here for Mega Gaming Unleashed. And certainly well-deserved, as they have been outclassing Darkseid through both of these games, just taking commanding leads in both games and able to come out with the W, only giving up two kills in that last one. Just a clean game from everybody all around. And, and exactly. Like, that was... 
well, I mean, you, you, you've you hit the nail on the head right there. Clean from pretty much everybody from start to finish. Maybe we could make a criticism for Princeton dying in the mid lane when they took the dragon. And there's a potential world where we, you know, criticize adjustment on the sub for sticking around under the turret. But the, the overall net gains and the trades and everything like that, it was more than worthwhile in their favor so they were more than capable of picking up this second execution of composition and i'm really happy that they've managed to net themselves this first 2-0 here in the mid league yeah gotta feel good for those guys congratulations to them especially against dark side who were sitting at the top of those standings coming into today's game having won all of their series thus far or at least going one and one as they did earlier tonight and that 2-0 and is going to bring omega up to four and three no that doesn't make any sense that's not divisible <laughs> by two it's well, gotta it's... be it's got okay so they've won they've got a 2-0 gordo a 1-1 and a 1-1 no, and a no two they're, they're they're even at the minute they're four and four all right there we go there yeah that is going to put them to four and four i don't know why my brain kept going to three <laughs> and three it's too late at the night for me to do math anymore but gonna be feeling good at that four and four record moving on up in the standings and they're gonna be right back for more games next week but until then that is going to do it for omega gaming's stream tonight thank you everybody for tuning in and we will see you soon.